When you think of Tokyo, what comes to mind? Skyscrapers, LED screens, bustling city life, crowded city streets. While all that is part of Tokyo, it's easy to overlook the lesser known neighborhoods, which is a shame because they can be delightful little areas brimming with local places to explore. And as always, you know there's gonna be some sexy food. Welcome to Setagaya Daita Station. I'm sure you've heard of this place before. It's like on your bucket list, right? Okay, yeah, I know it's probably not on your bucket list because it's a very residential neighborhood, but it is very close to a popular neighborhood called Shimokitazawa, which is for another Tokyo tours. But this neighborhood has a very special place in my heart. I wandered upon it accidentally coming down a railroad track and I found all these little hidden gems. And today I was really surprised to arrive at the station and discover that they've had like a massive facelift to the whole front of it. There's like this big footprint on the ground and they've got these cool little smooth stones for sitting on. So it looks even nicer than before, but this place has so many little nooks and crannies that I want to show you guys. Get your shoes ready, get yourself a snack. Tokyo tours time, everyone. left the station man but beautifully placed it's actually like so in the middle of the pole it's like they had a ruler or a um what's that thing called protractor no protractors are for angles what am i thinking when you like level something out i don't know it's perfect and it's the unique black and white version of crod i've only seen the one where he's draw drawn down the center like here but this side slash it is a new sighting i am like a pokemon collector who just got their first pikachu this is my first time to see this crod do you guys understand this? Do you want to, are you feeling it? <sighs> Special day. Special day. It's time to get lost. And by get lost, I mean take a little wander down the side streets. I'm aiming to eat lunch at a curry shop that I've never been to before, but I've read a lot about. It's called Young's Curry. Instead of taking the direct route that my map suggests, I prefer to kind of walk on an angle and squiggle through the streets to explore the neighborhood and see what I can find. I'm always amazed at the places that you stumble across, like just these tiny little shrines or temples that are in the neighborhoods. Nothing, you know, huge, but something that's been taken care of that's obviously been here for ages, you can see the wear on the stones, the moss. This is a fox shrine, um, but it's clearly right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. There's kids coming home from schools. There's the casual local helicopter flying overhead. I don't know. Don't you know that I'm filming right now? <sighs> Anyways, you never know what you're gonna stumble across. Uh, roger that, we have eyes on King Kogi. It seems she has spotted us along with the crowd stickers. She's on to us. Ooh, I can see it. This is where we're going, young curry. I can smell it from the street. Nestled in a residential area is a dope little curry shop that just pops out of nowhere. I aim to arrive just before closing, which is 3 p.m., to avoid any crowds. It's tucked down a side alley. It's small, but it has a homely vibe with a lot of warm lighting. The menu consists of five types of curry with a self-described European flavor. Now don't miss out on the section to the right. These are called toppings, or in Japanese, toppingu, and they are little additions that you can add to your curry. I recommend the foie foie omu topping, which means fluffy omelet poured over the rice. It's like an omu rice, so they're kind of like making it short form there, omu. And foie foie means fluffy. It's so foie foie, I could die. And oh my God, you gotta add the cheese. 
Now, one interesting thing about Japan is that the store owners really value the customer's experience and their privacy. They want you to disconnect from your phone and connect to your food. For the sake of Tokyo Tours, we politely asked if we could film, and they had absolutely no problem with it. So you lucky, lucky people get the chance to indulge in these R-rated food porn shots. That's right. Get your headphones on, turn the volume down. It's happening. Oh my god, look at this naughty plate of curry. It is brimming, nearly overflowing, with a dark gravy of complex spices and tender pieces of pork. And that egg, just hugging the rice in gentle, perfectly cooked ripples. Dare I try a cheese pull? My gosh, it just won't stop. It keeps getting longer and longer. And longer. I wonder if I'm being a little bit risky here, but I want to get a little bit of everything in my mouth. Curry, pork, rice, cheese, and egg. It's so big, I don't know if I can fit it all in my mouth, but I'll try. Ooh, still a little bit of curry left here. You thought you could get away from me? You can't get away from me. I mean, that was really good. I loved every bite of it. That was so good. I am so full right now. I will say that these kind of places are such like little hidden gems to find because they're inside of a residential neighborhood. So do keep that in mind. Sometimes they want you to be a little bit aware of the fact that when you're leaving the place, there are people's homes around. So try not to be, you know, too noisy or rambunctious. Um, but other than that, just you absolutely need to come here and enjoy their curry. It was freaking fantastic. I need to walk off this curry, baby. That's what I need to do. To adventures, Ugh, slow adventures. Slow mask filled burped curry adventures. Ooh, look at this primary color party. I love the clean, colorful designs of these recycling boxes stacked so neatly alongside these colorful vending machines. Now to anyone that's born and raised in Japan, yes, I am taking photos of recycling bins filled with empty bottles of beer, sake, and soda. But to someone like me, raised outside of Japan, they're so cool looking, it's lovely. And on top of all that, they're so square. So I have this um, nerdy app on my phone that's free. It's called PlantNet and you can take photos of plants and then they will identify the plant no matter where you are in the world. And um, it's so much fun. So like when I walk around and I'm like, oh, this looks like lavender. You just take a photo of it and then sure enough, it's like, yep, it's lavender. And it shows you all the different kinds. Like there's English lavender, there's French lavender, there's mealy sage, there's Mexican bush sage, which not the best name for a plant. Kind of sounds like a, maybe like an STD. Fern leaf lavender, lilac chase tree, purple toad flax. That sounds like an ingredient in Harry Potter. And, uh, and broad lavender. Ooh, a lot of lavender in the world. It smells great. <sighs> oh yeah. After wandering down side streets and up hills and nerding out over recycling, I'm ready for an iced coffee. Now this sign might be familiar to some of you, and that's because Kichijoji is the original OG location for light up coffee. Kichijoji. I love this shop and was delighted when they expanded to a second location. And let me tell you, the quality and friendliness has not changed. I ordered two iced coffees 
and each cup is freshly made in front of you. No stale burnt coffee pots here, my friends. First, you choose the type of beans you'd like from their selection of the month. They'll grind them and expertly hand drip hot water to extract the perfect flavor from those magic little cherry fruits we call coffee beans. You can see she's using hot water to extract the flavor from the coffee, but it's being cooled down over ice as it drips through. But to prevent your brew from being too watered down from the fast melting ice, it's going to be strained like a cocktail and then fresh ice is added. Mwah, perfection. We've clearly been blessed by the crowd gods I found yet another crod today. Crod, damn it! This one's even different than the last one. The last one had a slashy going through it, and a little while ago I found one that had a middle line going through it, but now this is a half and half black crod. There's definitely something happening in the world of crod, and it's all on these poles, and it's like almost like it's like a dotted line leading me somewhere to a treasure chest filled with crod coins and a little crod leprechaun being like, yeah, yeah, find me. I don't know if that was Irish. Maybe it's Irish Japanese, you know? Jirish. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ironese. No, Jirish is better. I'm Jirish. Look at the Jirish. <laughs> you, you took my pot of karate gold. <laughs> So surprised right now so I have been all over this neighborhood and I guess they redeveloped everything I remember it being under construction but I didn't know what they were building and they made this like gorgeous little strip in the neighborhood that has all these different shops there's like pop-up coffee there's beer they have places where you can buy like local miso and soy sauce and like little event spaces and stuff this is so delightful and they have around the corner from here all these little outdoor patio seating areas I mean, this is gonna be packed in the summertime, but wow, they did such a nice job. It's lovely. It's so green around this neighborhood. And a lot of people I talk to that have never visited Japan seem to be under the impression that it's a city of cold steel and you have to go to Kyoto or the countryside for a greener part to see. But that's absolutely not true. It's no wonder that in this little neighborhood, surrounded by trees and plants, inside a charming brick house, you'll find a Studio Ghibli pastry shop. Shiro Hige's Cream Puff Shop has been around since 2008, and it is a totally official bakery. <laughs> Meaning, it has full permission from Miyazaki to make little Totoro cream puffs. There are all kinds of hand drawings, tiny objects, and autographs from Miyazaki and his team. Although it's a small space, Ghibli film characters are scattered about everywhere. It's like a treasure hunt. Currently, there is a four-person max inside the bakery at a time, so the sign asks for you to wait outside the door. They sell cookies and other items, which are really nice souvenirs. And they only bake their Totoro cream puffs once a day. A few of the flavors will change seasonally, and you can tell because of the little hats on the Totoro. It's so cute. I recommend going midweek to avoid a long weekend queue and the risk of them being sold out. Oh, wow. Wow. So nice. Okay, there are only two shops that are like this. There's one in Kichijoji and there is this one here. And they are the like official, I, I heard, and this could be rumor, I'm not sure, but it's like sister-in-law and like daughters-in-law. So it's people who are related to Miyazaki himself. They have a lot of original artwork and like little tiny toys and they have things that are signed. So if you are a fan, you definitely need to check it out. But there is nowhere for you to sit. Upstairs is a different cafe. So make sure you grab your puffs and then head off to the wonderful world around you and find yourself a bench to sit on and see if you can eat them because they're so cute. How am I gonna, what am I gonna do? Eat their head first or put 
them out of their misery. One shot? I don't know. Right, I have returned from once I began. Is that a thing? Anyways, I'm back at the station and that's because I've got my puffs and I wanna take you guys to a really nice park with a pretty epic view. If we're lucky, we're gonna see Mount Fuji. If we're not lucky, we're still gonna get amazing view of railroad tracks, which you know I love. And bonus, this has a really cool overpass with like rainbow graffiti on the edges. So, I mean, what's there not to like? Plus like a park overlooking railroad tracks, like wh what? Come on, let's go. Well, looky here, an overpass with a much less rusty bridge. No surprise here, of course, I'm gonna stop and gaze upon the organized chaos. This is a major roadway running north to south and it connects west side Tokyo and all its major neighborhoods. You can really get a feel for just how busy and crowded Tokyo can be when you watch the cars, the trucks and the buses rush on by. This little slice of bustling Tokyo is nicely bookmarked with the little park I'm about to chill in, as after all, these cream puffs ain't gonna eat themselves. From busy roads to a busy train track, all of us transportation nerds can gaze upon four tracks worth of train tracks from this park. Well, I've arrived at the park and unfortunately, I cannot see Fujisan from here. I can see a little bit of a mountain range, but I've seen it many, many times before. But you know what? That's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? You cannot control the weather as much as we try. Make the clouds go. What can you do? I still have uh, these excellent cream puffs to dig into, so I'm gonna do that right now. I have two, so I guess I have to share. And there's only one legal way you can do these kind of things in Japan. That's rock, paper, scissors, junk and pulp. Ready for this? This is gonna be fighting for the green one, okay? Ready? Junk and boy. There you go. That's for, that's for you. How are you supposed to eat this? Do you think you just like bite it ear first or you like bite its butt or you... We'll find out. Totoro, I'm sorry. You're Totori awesome, but I Totori have to eat you. I'm gonna start with the tiny hat. Oh, I got the chocolate one. Mmm, wow. That's filled. That is brimming. I expected like a little more shoe pastry, but um, it's like 90% cream filling. But, sorry, Dr. Rowe. <laughs> mm. It's very light. It's kind of moussey, actually. It's like a whipped moussey kind of pudding on the inside. Oh, it's quite nice. I'm just gonna put you out of your misery, buddy. The inside is so fantastic and it is very generously filled. Like it is bow rimming. Uh, the outside shoe pastry, it's a little on the dry side, but honestly, each one of these were about $4.60. So it's not like it's gonna break the bank and what great nostalgia. Sorry, buddy. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Well, I hope you all enjoyed this Tokyo tour. I had an excellent day, despite the fact that Mount Fuji was not available for this final shot. That's fine, 
that's totally fine. Sometimes things don't go your way, but the day itself was still, I think, a massive success. If you're interested in visiting these places, make sure you check the links in the info box. Oh, and I finally got YouTube membership ready for King Kogi. So if you'd like to join as a member, you can join on YouTube or on Patreon. And if you'd like some extra secret Google map locations to places that I like, but are not in these videos, you're just gonna have to become a member. Plus, like, look at those cute little pig badges you get beside your name. It's so cute. Come on, you guys.